What's up, y'all? We feeling good? We good? You ever wonder if our digital twins are at a conference right now, concerned about their analog twins messing everything up? I think about that all the time. Also, donut economics, way more delicious than trickle-down economics. Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, I'm Baratunde Thurston, back again with another chapter of City Stories. Today, we're going to be in conversation with Nigerian artist Peju Alatiste. And to get a flavor of this magical work, let's roll the video first. Welcome to the Barclay Hall Industrial Complex. We're standing in front of my studio, the old powerhouse. The old powerhouse used to generate electricity to that building there, which was used to build ships. Um, and right beside us is the scrapyard. You can hear the machines. This is where all machines die and transition into an artist's heaven. So um, the noise is music to my ears. So come into my studio. And inside, this is where all the magic happens. Um, I'll show you some of my work. Uh, this is called uh, O is the New Cross. It's about um, necklacing. It's a mob mentality act where people, justice, jun jungle justice, where people are necklaced and burned to death without any form of trial. This is my, um, my rebellion against the mob mentality of four boys that were killed in Port Harcourt in Nigeria some years ago. These works are some of the works from the Venice Biennale Architecture 2021, yeah? And uh, this is what I'm working on now. This is, uh, this is not a new piece. It's an old piece um, that a client uh, damaged, and I'm trying to fix it. It's called Eve should, Eve should Have Stayed in Bed That Day. You know, she could have saved us a whole lot by not eating the apple, but yeah. This is it. <laughs> and then I'll take you upstairs for a chat. All right, are you with us, Peju? Doing a little, ch is this one of those moments where you're on mute? Are we doing that right now? We're gonna check the technicalities. Hello? Yes, woo! <laughs> Nice to see you. Nice. Very glad to be with you. Nice to have you with us virtually. Uh, by explanation for the people here in Amsterdam, Peju is in Glasgow, Scotland right now. Uh, and so my first uh, question for you, Peju, is uh, what you doing in Scotland? You, you're from Lagos. What's happening? <laughs> I'm here to make magic. I, I, I needed uh, to expand my studio. Um, so Lagos was getting a bit uh, small. And um, Glasgow is an industrial city. It's got great people. Um, the people here are just warm. They've got a big heart, and I just love it here. It's a great place to produce. I've never heard anybody refer to Lagos as getting a bit small, so congratulations on the size <laughs> of your vision. Um, can you tell us a bit about what makes Lagos special to you? Ah, oh, Lagos is, if you're an adrenaline junkie, that's the place to be. It's a fast place. Um, everyone is in a hurry to get things done. Um, so there's a type of energy there um, that I enjoy. It's, um, it's, it has a creative buzz. The art scene is really thriving. Uh, we're getting noticed, and uh, it, it, is, it is a great place to be inspired. Well, speaking of getting noticed, let's put up uh, one of these images that the, the team has. Can we get uh, the first image up to one? I want to talk about this. Oh, it's up on my left side here. Okay, so we've got these sculptures of flying girls. They're in London's Regent Park. That's what we're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, can you talk to us about the flying girls? What's the history there? And tell us about your, your sculpture. Okay, so uh, the sculpture up now is yeah. called Seam and the Glass Birds. Um, so it's in Regent's Park for the Freezer sculpture. And 
So I had written a book called Flying Girls, and in the book, my protagonist is called Sim. Sim is a domestic servant at the age of nine. It is not an uncommon practice in Nigeria. Mm. And Sim is a child who um, labors during the day. She, she lives a parallel life in her dream world. So when she goes to sleep, she wakes up in a world of magic. She, where she sings, she, she, she can fly, she can talk to animals. I use uh, Yoruba folklore and Yoruba mythology to create this world of fantasy where she can escape into. And for me, it is um, important to do this, to be able to create that space where, um, I mean, it's a fictional space, but it's a space that children can go to if for, it's important to have that place where children can be children, you know? So I create that platform. And uh, bringing Sim to London uh, in Regent's Park, what, it, she's, she's like an ambassador for, for all young girls that find themselves in a situation that is not wholesome. It, it's not a place where children should be. A mythological girl in a fictional place represented in the real space of a park in London. How have the people there been responding to this work in the public space? Oh, so that's really interesting because um, in the story, I, I have the stories of uh, Sim etched on the sides of the sculpture. And uh, each panel has, uh, tells a, like a poem or like a short story about her journey in the alternate, in, uh, alternate uh, reality. So in one of them, the yellow one, you can see there are two girls there and then the subsequent squares in the stainless steel is just the one girl. So it, the one that has the two girls, it's a uh, sim and a friend, an imaginary friend that, um, visits her in her dreams and her name is Emiogo. So on the side where I've written the stories, Emiogo disappears from Sim's dreams and um, Sim tries to find Emiogo back. And I get text messages from people saying, oh, you know, we found Emiogo, tell Sim we know where Emiogo is. And <laughs> people write me messages about their dreams, about Sim, you know, so it, it, it's a funny way to connect to it. Um, but in other, in other ways, I mean, there are people that have talked to me about their experiences as children, where I buy my paint in Glasgow. The man um, who manufactures my paint saw the sculptures, and he, I told him the story about the work, and he told me about um, his mother who grew up in a care system. And uh, he said he could really relate to it because at some point she... Um, tried to escape, but unfortunately, uh, she ended up doing drugs. Uh, that was her way of escapism. Mm. Um, and she passed away from the drug use. But he could relate to it. Anyone who has uh, a dream to be in a better position than they find themselves can relate to the work. And we all have those dreams. Do we have a few more stills of Peju's work we can show on the screen? Yes, yeah, so, so this is Flying Girls. The, this is the work that started it all. Um, this is a, a chapter in the book where Sim wakes up on the moon and she wakes up some shadows and they become friends with her. And they play with the birds and the butterflies. Uh, there's a portal that they're coming through. Um, this was shown at the Nigerian Pavilion in 2017 at the Venice Biennale. Peju, uh, the people in this room know how I feel about the clock uh, that we are subject to here. We are out of time. I just want to appreciate your time uh, for sharing with us a, a different virtual world that we can access through art in the public space, and congratulations on your success. Thank you so much. Thank you. Peju Alatiste. Thank you. All right. I feed from desire.